What's up guys, Justin here with the SketchupEssentials.com back with another SketchUp Essentials tutorial for you. So I uh, wanted to create kind of a series to uh, help woodworkers that are just getting started in SketchUp um, learn how to use the program and uh, just kind of get them a good start. Um, create something that's kind of easy to follow that'll kind of walk you through step by step what you need in order to start modeling in SketchUp. So let's go ahead and just jump into it. Alright, so when you first download SketchUp and uh, open it up, you're going to get a window that's a lot like this one. Um, it's kind of a welcome, it's kind of a welcome screen. You, This will be a little bit different for you if you have the uh, free make version. This will say SketchUp Make instead of SketchUp Pro. Um, quick note, the make version is free free so you don't have to pay in order to use that. There are some things that come with uh, SketchUp Pro that you can use, things like layout, but most of you aren't really going to need that to get started um, with woodworking modeling. But um, I, I will link to a note up above where I talk about the difference between SketchUp Pro and SketchUp May in case you want more information about that. But so this is the screen that's going to first pop up and that's going to have um, some links to SketchUp's uh, getting started videos. They've got some pretty good getting started videos so you can go check those out in addition to some of the stuff that I've put out um, if you're looking for more information. But when we first do this what we want to do is we want to select a template. So um, what we're going to do is we're going to go down to this little drop down next to this thing called template and we're going to click on it. And what that's going to allow you to do is that's going to allow you to select a template is basically a template basically affects uh, what your units are, what your styles are, what everything's going to look like in SketchUp. You can change all of these things later, so don't get, um, don't worry too much about which one you select. Um, I kind of have a default model in here that I use, but if you scroll down, there's actually a woodworking inches or a woodworking millimeters. So you can select those, um, and that'll be kind of set up. Uh, set up with the right units and that sort of thing. So I'd recommend if you're a woodworker going down to woodworking inches, clicking on it and clicking start using SketchUp. So when this first pops up for your woodworking style, um, you're going to notice there's no default model in here or anything like that. If you select some of the others, there will be a default like two-dimensional model um, that shows up that you can delete out. Usually it's a model of a person. That's just more there for scale than for anything else. That's why mine's in there. Um, just so uh, when I start drawing and that sort of thing, it gives me a feeling of how big stuff is. But a lot of the time when you just dive in and start modeling, you can just delete that out. But so the first thing I wanted to do was kind of run you through the workspace in SketchUp because there's a few different areas that you need to know about. So the first thing is going to be your menu bar. Your menu bar up here is going to contain uh, links to basically everything that you need in order to adjust and change your model. So a lot of your tools show up in here, um, your camera views, you can adjust your trays off to the side, you can uh, affect all the different extensions that you have installed, as well as having your like um, undo, redo, your save, all that different stuff. So a lot of your kind of administrative stuff is going to be up there. Um, below that, you're going to have a section for your toolbars. So your toolbars are going to have links to all your different tools. Like for example, this toolbar is kind of your getting started toolbar. That's got links to things like your rectangle tool and your line tools. If you want to come in here and you want to draw lines, that sort of thing. So that's got links to all those different things. And one thing to note about that is you can right click on them and there's other toolbars in here. And this is going to change depending on what you have installed. I have a lot of extensions installed installed because I do a lot of different things beyond woodworking and uh, stuff like that. Um, so this will change based on which extensions you have installed, but you can turn things on and off by just coming in here and just uh, right clicking and clicking on different things. So I can turn like the camera toolbar on and you can also drag and move these around by clicking on the little dotted lines off to the side. So you can actually drag these out if you want them like out in your space. Um, you can close them and then to get them back, you can just right click and um, and just open those back up. Um, one thing to note about that is I would go ahead and turn on your large tool set. So right click up in here, go to large tool set, and uh, turn that on. That'll turn on this tool set over here. It's just got a few more tools that you're going to use. I mean, if for whatever reason that doesn't work, you can go to view, toolbars, and you can select that large tool set in there. So it does the same thing. That's just uh, another way to get to that. 
So that's your toolbars section. Um, off to the right, you've got your tray. So your tray is going to have information about different objects in your model. Like for example, if I click on these different objects, I can see things like areas for my entities and my entity info. It's got things like my materials. So if I was going to apply different materials to my model, that sort of thing, that, that's in there, as well as some other stuff like scenes, um, if you're creating animations, or if you're trying to save views, uh, all, all your different layers and your outliner, which you can use to turn things on and off. And uh, so th there's a lot of useful stuff over here in your tray, and we'll talk more about some of that stuff a little bit later. Um, and then down at the bottom, you've got your status bar. So your status bar down at the bottom is going to contain information about your currently active tool. So like you can see right now, this is telling me select objects. So that's telling me that I can drag my mouse to select multiple objects. So it'll have information in here about whatever's currently active. Like for example, if I activate the line tool, so if I click on this little pencil and then I click in my model, you can see how it tells me to select my start point. That's saying to draw a line, I need to select my start point. And then I click once, and then it tells me, okay, the next step is to select your endpoint or enter value. And so, and then the other thing you're going to note about that is if you look down in the lower right hand corner, that's got a length in there. So that's telling me how long, how long the current line that I have is. So you can see if I move this a little longer, this is going to go up to 281 feet or 341. It's adjusting with my object. So you can see how long or you can see various measurements about whatever tools you have active. So if I activate the rectangle tool, for example, and I draw a rectangle, you can see how there's two dimensions in there because you have to give it both a length and a width. And so you can see how that adjusts as I move my mouse as well. So the status bar is going to be really important for uh, you knowing what size everything is, that sort of thing. So, and then what I want to go ahead and do, because you can see how right now this is doing this all in inches. Um, because of the template that I selected, which is the woodworking template, I want to go ahead and change that so it's not just showing it in imp um, so it's not just showing that in inches. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to go up and I'm going to change my units. So I'm going to go up to Window, Model Info, and then if you go down to the bottom, this has a thing for units. So in my units, what I'm going to do is I'm going to change this from fractional inches and I'm gonna click this drop down and I'm gonna change this to architectural and the reason I'm gonna change this to architectural is because I want this to show up in feet and inches down in the bottom right hand corner so I want this to show up as 6 foot 10 or um, whatever those dimensions are I don't want that to show up as 72 inches or whatever and that's kind of a preference thing but that's that's kinda of how I want that to be so you can adjust that and the other thing you can adjust if you're a woodworker is it, you can adjust your precision. So I could set this to be to set all my units so that they're accurate to the 64th of an inch, but I don't really want to do that um, because you're really not going to get when you're woodworking, you're not really going to get to uh, any tolerances closer than a 16th anyway. So a 16th is probably um, the closest that you want this to be. So now that we've got our measurements all kind of set up, let's go ahead and uh, model some objects. So uh, the first thing I want to talk about is just the way SketchUp creates objects. And so what SketchUp is, is SketchUp is a face modeler. And what that means is SketchUp draws faces anytime you have three or more coplanar lines that intersect that are on the same plane. And all that means is if I draw a flat face like this and I draw two lines, you can see how there's no face in here because this lines, these lines don't intersect. But if I activate the line tool and then I click between these two points and I draw a line here, you can see how I have three lines that are kind of closing in a space and you can see how SketchUp created a face in there. So anytime you have three or more lines, you can do that. So like for example, if I was to come in here and I whoops. 
and I was to draw a five-sided shape like this, since those are all coplanar, SketchUp will go ahead and draw a face inside of there. And you can erase those faces out. So I can click on this face and I can click delete and that face is gone. You can see how now there's nothing in here that I can click on or anything like that. And then if you want those to come back, all you have to do is just redraw the line over this point. And as long as these are all coplanar, it'll draw this face back in. So that's how you can kind of get your faces to show up in your model if they go away or whatever. And then the other thing is if I was to delete this line out, that face would go away because you no longer have three coplanar intersecting lines. So, and then the other thing about faces is you can also split them. So if I was to draw a line from this point to this point, now you can see how that split that face into two different parts. So if I was to erase this line out, then it would re-merge those two faces. So now you can see when I draw this line in here, now I have three coplanar lines over here that are creating a face, and then I have three coplanar lines over here. And I could erase out each one of those separately now because they're separate faces in your model. So that's generally how faces work in SketchUp. So now let's talk about taking an object into 3D. So SketchUp has a tool called the push-pull tool um, that you can use to take 2D shapes to 3D. So let's say for example, if we come in here and we draw a rectangle, and I'm using keyboard shortcuts, by the way, so you can activate different tools by tapping different things on your keyboard. So I can activate the line tool by tapping the L key. I can activate the rectangle tool by tapping the R key. So you can see I don't have to go back up and click on each one of these objects because I know the keyboard shortcuts. And you just kind of learn those as you go. But like I can activate the arc tool by tapping the A key. So I can model really quickly by doing this. So that's, that's how I'm drawing these. I'll try to mention the keyboard shortcuts I'm using as I go. So in this case, what we're going to do is we're going to activate the rectangle tool by tapping the R key. You're going to click once to set one corner, and then you're going to click a second time to set a second corner, and that'll draw a rectangle. So you can see how that drew the rectangle right between the two points that I selected. Well, now what we're going to do is we're going to use the push-pull tool in order to extrude that. So extruding something just means you're going to take a flat face and you're going to take it into 3D. So in order to do that, we're going to activate the push-pull tool. That's going to be this little box with a red arrow coming out of it, or you can tap the P key on your keyboard. And then all you have to do is you see how when I move my mouse over this face, it's kind of shading it in um, with these little dots. That just means that it's indicating to me that this is a face that SketchUp would push-pull into 3D if I was to click on it. And you can see how down here in the corner, I've got instructions for what to do. So it's telling me to pick face to push or pull. Pull. So all I'm going to do is I'm going to click once on that face. I'm not holding my mouse down, by the way. I'm just clicking and then moving my mouse. And then I'm going to move my mouse up, and I can click again to set that face. So you can see how what I did was I took that face and I extruded it into 3D. So now I have this 3D box. And each one of these faces is its own, or each, each one of these faces is a separate object. So you can see how I can click on that and then hit the delete key to erase those out. And if you remember, all we have to do to get those back is we just draw a line between these two corners and SketchUp will heal these faces back in. So if you ever accidentally delete out a face, you can come in here real easily and just redraw over these lines and it'll redraw those faces back in. So and the nice thing about using the push-pull tools, you can also use this precisely. And so what that means is if I was to come in here and delete out all that stuff that I just extruded up, let's say I wanted to extrude this to a certain thickness. Like let's say for example, I wanted this to be four inches thick. What I would do is I would activate the push-pull tool, I would click on this face, and then I would type in four and hit the enter key. And you can see how what that did is that extruded this to a thickness of four inches. So if I was to come in here with the tape measure tool and measure this, you can see how it shows as four inches. So this is actually two scale, four inches thick. So, and you can do that. You can do that with most of the different tools in SketchUp. So like for example, if I was to draw a line, let's say I wanted to draw a line that was six foot long. I would just click once to set my first point. I would type in six foot 
and I would hit the enter key and you can see how that drew a six foot long line. So most of these tools you can uh, not only click and just kind of arbitrarily set a point, you can also type in a measurement when you're using them. So, and then what you can do with the push pull tool is not only, so you can basically push pull any face. So like for example, if I was to come in here and I was to split this kind of like we did with our triangle earlier, you can see how these are two separate faces now because I drew a line across them. Well now all you'd have to do is you could push pull this face and you could make this piece thicker and leave this one thinner. And then you could do the same thing over here. You could draw a line across the middle and you could push pull this out in order to kind of extrude that out. And you can come in and do that multiple times. So I can move this all around and figure out where I want it to be. And you can see how just as I move my mouse over these different objects, what it's doing is it's shading them in to show me which one I'd be pushing and pulling. So I can push pull all of these flat faces. So there is a limitation in there in that you can't push pull curved faces. And there's some extensions that kind of let you work around that. But generally speaking, that's, uh, that's going to be the limitation of the push pull tool is you can only push pull flat faces. But you can see how I can really adjust the way that my model works just by pushing and pulling these various things. And then one of the nice things about this is not only can you use the push pull tool to um, add material, but you can also use it to remove material. So let's say for example that I had something like a bookcase. So I'll just come in here with the rectangle tool and I'll just draw a rectangle to a certain height. And we're just going to ignore our dimensions right now down in the corner. But we do the same thing, we draw a rectangle, we push pull it to give it a little bit of thickness, but then what you can do is you can split this face by drawing a little groove on it. So you can see how now these two faces are different. Well, you can use the push pull tool to remove the material in that groove. So, and you can see how when I move that, I don't necessarily have to, as long as I'm single clicking, I don't have to keep my mouse over that object. You can see how I can move this up or down and it'll still push pull with my mouse. So, and then you can see how what this is doing is this is limiting my offset. So it won't let me push pull this any further right now. That's because you're coming up against the end of this face. But what you can do with the push pull tool active is you can see if I move this over this corner, it's going to inference to this corner. So that's me basically telling it I want you to push pull this object to the back side of this object. And really anywhere along this line, it's going to inference to that. But then if I click on this, it's going to erase out that face. So it's nice and clean and it creates this kind of groove up here. So you can use this to create things like grooves really easily. So I could come in here and do the same thing. on this back side so I could create multiple different grooves and move things around really easily. So and there's a lot of different things that you can do with this. Uh, I would recommend just uh, going and just kind of playing around with this a little bit. So just use the rectangle tool, the line tool, and the push-pull tool and just kind of create some shapes and see what you can come up with. So um, just go create some rectangles, just draw some lines across some different faces and see what you can do. It's a really good exercise for just uh, kind of wrapping your mind around the way this works. So go mess around with that a little bit and see what you can come up with, see what kind of limitations you run into, that sort of thing. I mean, you know, like right here, this isn't letting me push pull this out because it's kind of blocked by another line. So there are some limitations to this, but go play around with this, see what you can come up with. And if you have any questions, just leave a comment below this video and I'll try to help you out. So, and then one last example, you could also come in here and you could draw a rectangular face. And if you were to push pull that and give it a little bit of thickness, you could create an opening in it the same way. So you would just draw a rectangle on this face and you can see how now these are two separate faces. You could just push pull this to the back and just click on this back corner and you can see how that's going to create an opening in this shape as well. Leave a comment below. Let me know what you thought. If you like this video, please remember to click that like button down below. If you're new around here, remember to click that subscribe button for new SketchUp content every week. If you like what I'm doing on this channel, please consider visiting my support me page on my website. That's the sketchupessentials.com slash support. But in any case, thank you so much for taking the time to watch this. I really appreciate it and I will catch you in the next video. Thanks guys.